Hey everybody, Neil Flynn here, and it is pickup video time once again. Um, got some some decent stuff, some kind of weird stuff, and uh, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. Um, first of all, um, I think of the best order to go here. Uh, on my way home from work yesterday, um, actually on my way into work, I noticed it. Uh, there's a Blockbuster store that I drive by every day on my way to work, and uh, they were closing the store. It's at this location only, you know, everything on sale. What you usually get when a store closes. Um, and, uh, excuse me, my throat is really bothering me today. Um, so, on my way home from work, I'm like, eh, let me pop in there real quick, see if they've got any deals going on. Um, games were only 10% off, but I figured, you know, if there was something good there, you know, I might pick it up anyway, um, because I didn't want to wait and have, you know, something good disappear trying to wait to get it for a better price. And I actually did find a few things. Um, first off, uh, for the Xbox 360, um, got Band Hero. Uh, this was $9.99 regularly, so like 8 bucks. Um, I grabbed it because I wasn't sure if I had it already, um, and I figured for 10 bucks, even if I had it already, you know, I could use it as a giveaway or something, uh, for a contest later on or whatever. Um, and as it turns out, I did have it. I couldn't remember, and I, because I haven't played it. Uh, <laughs> but, so, I, but I grabbed it anyway, just just in case, because I do enjoy the um, Guitar Hero slash Rock Band games. Um, and then for the PS3, um, went ahead and picked up God of War three, despite the fact that I haven't beat the first two yet. Uh, <laughs> and that was fourteen ninety nine, um, and then of course ten percent off that. And Resistance two. Um, also fourteen ninety nine, and then ten percent off of that. So two really good games um, for a pretty good deal. I think fourteen ninety nine for those two. Um, and then uh, a few days ago, I think it was, um, I popped into a um, Target that I don't normally go to um, just to see if they had anything. And on their clearance end cap, they had Transformers: War for Cybertron for the three hundred and sixty, and that was nine ninety eight. So this game, you know. It was not that old, uh, so to pick that up for 10 bucks was pretty good, I thought. Um, and then uh, today I went out, um, and I had to go, you know, run an, run an errand, basically, and I thought, well, I'd pop into uh, uh, Play and Trade, which is a place that I don't normally go a lot just because it's not exactly on the beaten path of, of where I normally go. It's kind of out of the way um, a little bit. So I don't pop in there that often, um, but I, I try and get over there every once in a while just to see if they have anything. And they did have a few things that caught my eye. Um, first off was Blood Bowl. That was six ninety nine. dollars um, This game really interested me when it first came out. Um, I'm not a huge Warhammer fan, but just the concept of it sounded really kind of cool. Um, I've seen the, the tabletop game played before, and it looked kind of cool. So for, for 7 bucks, basically, I thought I'd give it a try, see if it's any good. <laughs> Um, and then this one I just kind of picked up, um, just because I love all the characters in it. Um, and then this Sega Superstars Tennis, that was only three bucks. Um, probably some even easy achievement points in there as well. Um, so for three bucks you can't go wrong. Then they actually did have a few Sega CD games. Um, they had, uh, Ground Zero Texas, which I already have, and, uh, uh, I think it was NHL Hockey or something like that, but sports game I'm not too, too crazy about. But they did have this. Tomcat Alley, which is another great, well, great, <laughs> uh, full motion video, but, you know, with, with jet fighting combat, so, I don't think I've ever played this one, but it was one that caught my eye, and it was only 99 cents, so, can't go too wrong. I was hope I looked to see if maybe they had a Model 1, uh, Genesis Chords, um, just so I could maybe pick that up, just in case I can't find mine, which I haven't had a chance to, uh, locate that box yet, um, but they didn't have anything there, so. I may have to resort to eBay or something like that, or if anybody has a spare set that they <laughs> they want to toss my way. Um, so, uh, last week on my day off, um, I decided to go on a little trek. Um, basically, I did some research. Um, there's a, a fairly large thrift store um, not too far away from me um, that they, they advertise on TV all the time. And, you know, I thought, well, let me go over that. You know, I've never been in there before. Let me go and see if I can find anything worthwhile. Um, and then, 
not too far away from that one, I found out there's a Value Village, which I've heard some of you guys talk about finding stuff there. So I'm like, oh, well, let me make a little day out of it, and we'll go, go check out these other places. And then I also popped into a different Goodwill that I don't normally go to. Um, so first up was the Goodwill. Um, they were set up a little bit different than the one that I normally go to as far as their games. Basically what they did um, was they had some Genesis games there, and instead of selling them individually, they bundled them together. And it was five bucks um, for each little bundle, um, which is about what I pay singly. I usually pay like two dollars from mine individually anyway. Um, so there were a couple two-packs that interested me. Um, Carts are not in the greatest uh, condition, but some interesting titles. We got Taz, Escape from Mars, and uh, Desert Demolition, featuring Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote, two of my favorite all-time characters. Um, so that was the reason I picked up that one, was because that game was in there. Um, and then this one had Miss Pac-Man and Clue in it. Um, I think I have a, I'm a copy of Clue already. If I do, um, I will... Uh, you know, use it as a contest giveaway or something. I think the next contest I'm going to do is going to be um, 250. I think I might have hit 200 um, already, so I'll probably do a 250 contest. I don't want to do a contest, you know, every 100 subscribers or whatever, but here and there I'll, I'll throw one in. Um, so last but not least, we had Clay Fighter and Comic Zone. Comic Zone is one of my all-time favorite Genesis games, and I'm not sure if I have it already, so... There's those. Like I said, those were five bucks each. And then they also had a boxed copy of MLB PA Baseball. Um, you know, and I didn't even open to see if it was complete or not. And of course, no instruction manual, but it does have the, the little plastic thing on the cart. Um, That one was two bucks. Um, then we had Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Greatest Hits version, which some people care about that. I don't necessarily care about that. Um, and it's got a little crack in the case, but other than that, um, hopefully the game's in good shape. I didn't even open it. This tape does not want to come off. There we go. But yeah, game's in fine shape. So Mario Combat Trilogy, that was $2.50. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Bill Walsh College Football on the Sega CD. It's just rare to see Sega CD games uh, around a lot, so I went ahead and grabbed that one, and it was 2 bucks as well. Um, box complete. Uh, disc is perfect. So not a bad little find there. And then the two other, you know, thrift stores that I went to, um, completely, pretty much struck out as far as games goes, um, at the Value Village, they didn't have anything, if I remember right, they didn't have, yeah, they didn't have anything there, um, at the other one, which was, what is it called, America's Best Thrift Store or something like that, they did have, um, a Model 1 Genesis, oddly enough, but it didn't have, uh, anything with it, and I think they wanted 15 for it, so I wasn't going to get that. Um, but while I was there, um, I did see this, and I don't know, it intrigued me as an avid golfer, um, and Cobra DVS, maybe you can appreciate this too. It is Ultimate Golf, um, and it's basically a board slash card game based around golf. Um, there's a bunch of little... Um, boards in here that represent the holes um, and then you've got cards and stuff and a, and a die <laughs> so I'm not sure exactly how it plays it's got like this freaking, like ruler that I guess tells you how far you're gonna hit it and all that kind of stuff so it just like as an avid golfer it, it looked cool to me um, and it was three bucks so it's not like I spent a lot of money on it so kind of interested to to see how it plays um, and then at the Value Village, like I said, there was absolutely nothing there. But next door to the Value Village um, was a antique um, big, like, mall, basically. 
Um, and what the best way I can describe it is it was like a flea market without the actual booths being manned. Like there wasn't people at each thing. But basically there was all these booths set up that had all kinds of crazy stuff in them. Excuse me. Um, and so I'm like, you know, let me wander through this place and just see if I can find it. Because you never know what you're going to find um, in a place like that. Um, with all kinds of different people. Um, <clears throat> you know, and all kinds of different stuff. And, uh, you know, if you guys watch my, my Christmas Spectacular, you guys know that my wife and I are into Disney. And, and so I thought, well, maybe I'll find a Mickey Mouse collectible. And they did have um, some Mickey Mouse stuff. Nothing that... Um, caught my eye that was the right, you know, the right price or anything. They had, like, one of the old-school Mickey phones, um, but they wanted way too much for it. Um, they had a plastic Mickey bobblehead that was, like, you know, it was really cheaply made. All kinds of sports stuff. There was a place in the very back of the thing that had just all kinds of sports stuff. I didn't see anything that I really wanted. Um, but one, uh, one booth did... I didn't find any games or any systems or anything. Um... Apparently, I just missed a copy of, of Qbert. <laughs> but I'll get to that in a second as to why I mentioned that. But um, I don't know what system it was for or anything. But one one place did have um, a, a few little things. They had a Pac-Man TV tray, old metal TV tray, which I think my family used to have one that was exactly like that. Um, they also had an ET one, um, but the Pac-Man one was the one that caught my eye. But... It was in really bad shape, and they wanted 15 bucks for it. Uh, <laughs> had it been in, in, like, immaculate condition, I might have paid that much for it, um, just because it would be something cool to, like, hang on the wall or something. But for 15 bucks and the shape that it was in was just a little bit too much um, for my liking. Um, but in that same one, uh, along the wall, they had just a, a pile of board games, and, and sitting in there in the pile was the old Qbert board game. And I know for a fact we used to have this, um, my brother and I. Um, it was seven bucks, which is, is probably a little more than I wanted to pay, but you just don't see this kind of stuff. Unfortunately, um, and I opened it up while I was there, but I went ahead and bought it anyway. Um, the direct, there's a little note in here that's like directions missing and has pieces from ex a, a different game. Um, but I'm relatively certain if I did some research um, and found, like, a board game collecting site or something, I could track down a copy of the instructions. Not necessarily a copy, but, you know, the instructions on how to play it. And I, you know, it's just a cool piece to have because, like I said, it's not, you know, not something you see anymore. I don't even know if it's got the date that it was made. I'm pretty sure it was 80s. Yeah, it doesn't have to have the date on there, but, you know, you just don't see stuff like that anymore. Um, so, I went ahead and picked that up, too, and the, the reason that I say I must have just missed a copy of Qbert is because when I checked out up at the front, the you know, I've got a Qbert board game, the lady's like, oh, I just sold a Qbert game to somebody, and she's like, that's kind of weird, two Qberts in a row, so I don't know who had that, but, <laughs> but I sadly missed out on that one. So, anyway, guys, that's my pickups for this time. Um, uh, and just real quick, uh... Trouble A385 had just posted uh, his latest um, YouTube game community video. Um, and it, in there, he mentioned somebody, I can't remember who it was, Atari Leaf, I think it was, who brought up the, the subject of, you know, buying games just so you can do a pickup video about them. Um, and I don't see myself as that. I might, I might buy a little bit more than I normally would, um, but it's all stuff that I'm adding to my collection. Um, it's not, you know, I'm not picking up a game just so I can go, oh, hey, look, I picked this up, you know. I'm, I'm adding to my collection. Um, so I don't see myself as one of those people that, that goes out and buys games just to uh, to do pickup videos on them. So anyway, guys, that's it for this time, and we will see you next time.